so critical of cars. I see an Escalade and I just think douche, I'm sorry. I'm loving how you guys just cover those street signs up. Nothing makes me happier than not be able to see where the fuck I'm going. Come on, Grump. And I'm not a carpool, so I'll get out of the lane. Man, I have so much restraint. Ferrari! Let's get the Ferrari! It's a figgy fur! Get that figgy fur! Thing is, so in California, you can use the high occupancy vehicle lane in a motorcycle. Which is nice. It makes sense because you're just not, well, you're not driving around in a huge box with one person in it. So, you should get some sort of reward, right? This is the 5 freeway heading south. Somewhere in the uh, vicinity of the border between Orange County and San Diego County. When you first start getting on the highway on a bike, the first trip is a little, it'll bug you out a little bit. It's a little overwhelming. Because everyone's going at a good speed. And you, you know the consequences are just elevated. And if you fall, especially on a busy highway, well, the tire tracks are probably gonna be all over you. But in general, cars do a pretty good job of keeping an eye out for you, not ramming into your bumper. You know, they keep it they keep off you a good amount in general there's always the exceptions to the rule things are slowing down up here you want to you want to back off things slow down assess what's happening see if you know determine whether or not you want to split or not I'm still going 40 miles an hour so for me if it's 30 or under I'll pass through which we're approaching pretty quickly. So, instead of dealing with this, cars are pretty aware of me. You can see I'm sort of shifting out of the way. Once again, you know, the SUVs tend to be a little more ignorant. I don't know if because they're so, they're just dumb at birth or they have better noise isolation in those things. I don't know. I'm in the 50s again, I'm not gonna split. I'm moving at a good pace, I'm progressing, you know. Good enough for me. I'll tell you what though, I'm so happy I don't have to wave to bikers on the other side of the road on a highway. I think that's where the line is crossed, thankfully. I kind of peek at them, just waiting for someone to wave someday, but no one's done it so far, so. Glad I don't have to get involved in that. Yeah, I mean, one of the biggest things for me is keep some distance between the car in front of you. I mean, it's, once again, it's dogma, but it's there for a reason. You just need more time to slow down at these speeds and assess how you can escape out of here. Now, let's say I'm on this guy's bumper, he slams on his brakes, there's a guy to my right, there's that shit in the road to the left that you can see in the breakdown lane. You're gonna hit something. I don't want to hit that broken piece of tire. That's not my best option. Another is slamming into a, a car on my right side. So backing off gives you a, you know, a split second to determine your line through if you can't break in time. You can just come to a complete stop. You also want to check behind you if someone's right up on your ass, so you may choose to split instead of choosing to come to a stop. If someone's on your ass, you can always trust them. I'd rather squeeze between two cars. This guy don't want in front of me. He's Gonna be barreling his truck. His windows are tinted. This guy is in Pluto, for all I know. 
So this is uh, this is early afternoon traffic. This is kind of a sweet spot where you're not going to get any traffic. Yeah. yeah, people move around here. I'm doing 90 and like not going much faster than the traffic around me. So what does 90 miles an hour feel like on an FZ07? For me, uh, my, I don't know if it makes any difference having a longer torso or not, but... 6'2", a little lengthy. If that's relevant or not, I don't know. But if I hunch forward, 70 miles an hour plus, if I hunch forward, even 65, 70, if I hunch forward, get my elbows in, basically if I go into like a, a little semi-tuck, it shifts much better. Life is better. I don't feel it very much, it's sort of get low. There's not as much neck strain. The wind brushes over the helmet better. Helmet's a showy quest. I don't feel that sail effect in my chest. It's, it's, I really don't feel like I have to make an effort to pull myself forward at all when I'm in this position. If I sit upright, like right now, much more of a sail. What happens is you also get a lot of wind. Dude, dude what do you do with that blanket? Why don't you just wait for me to get by? I'm glad you want to announce it to the world, but... Yeah, I'm coming. No, I'm upright. You know, it's not bad, actually. Uh, I'm doing 80 now. Uh, I'm trying to sit like a British schoolboy. And uh, the British schoolboy is hanging in there. It's not too bad. He's not going to fall off of his bench. He's not going to spill any of his porridge. But there is a significant increase in comfort. Especially if you get a headwind coming on, that's when you really feel it. You get a headwind and you're, you're driving into it. That's a pretty big difference. So we're in Camp Pendleton right now. Well, clearly we're not in it, we're just going through it. I think I mentioned in my last video, it's about 20 miles of coast. It digs back quite a ways going east. A lot of interesting little details you pick up, like this facility here. I mean, there's a ton of cars parked there. All you see is two giant bubbles and a lot of power lines. I think they're slowing down as they always do in this area. Uh, there's a border patrol, not the border patrol, but the highway check. I don't know what this thing's all about, but. Basically, you drive by. If you don't look shady, then you don't stop. I don't know what they're looking for. But they have to stereotype. There's really no other option unless it comes with more sophisticated equipment to scan vehicles. They're not stopping people right now, but on the way through, it's all backed up. People can stop back there. That's right, Jetta. Go get them. difference when you get forward. You guys see the tanks? All sorts of fun stuff around here. Seriously man, look at this. I hope the camera still has battery. Is that absolutely necessary? It's a friggin' hazard. The guy is effectively carrying a storage locker on top of his pickup truck. There's another one! Come on, man! Take two trips! Someone tells me you're not that important. It's gonna ruin the, uh, the economy if you fucking drive in two days instead of one. That shit falls out of that truck and causes an accident. They better kill me. I can't drive. 
fast in the day. Dude, there's not a link to your right. 